Oh, number one, well, welcome uh, to Serrano Steam Village. I, you know, um, as I already said, uh, you are you are in, you are here. I'm so glad that you are part of what we're doing here at Serrano. Uh, this this was our first year as a Steam Village, and next year will be our first full year program where we have both seventh and eighth graders in. So we are learning as we go, and we thank you for your patience. We thank you for I know your willingness to kind of help us build this plane as we fly it. Uh, but you know, in the, in the lower left-hand corner of our steam logo there, it, it kind of says it all. It's a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. And, and he says, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. And that is such an important factor. You know, when we think about looking at things and how they interrelate to our STEAM program. So, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind as we go through. All right, so what is the STEAM Village? So the STEAM Village is an interdisciplinary two-year program. And I wanna emphasize that to all of our parents, both incoming and current STEAM Village parents. It is a two-year commitment. So we do plan for you to commit to two years to remain in the program because we, we staff it at that. We have students that are taking up a class space. And if we have students who drop out of the program, then we have, uh, classes that aren't full, and then we have bigger problems. So it, it is a two-year program, and it does sequentially build, as, as you'll see, and it does focus on those five areas of STEAM with the acronym that, that you see there on the, on the screen. So how is STEAM organized? So the STEAM Village students take the same five courses that any other student takes in terms of your core content courses of English, social studies, science, um, math, and PE. But they also take elective courses in computer science, engineering, and digital media arts. And they'll take in a, basically an introductory course in seventh grade these are trimester courses, they're 12 weeks long, and they'll take one each year. So kind of an introductory course, and then a build upon that course for the eighth grade year to advance some of those skills. So they'll actually get six different electives during their two years uh, spaced out over those two years. And what, what makes this different? And there are lots of schools who offer those courses. There are lots of schools who promote STEAM and have STEAM academies, they have STEAM programs. Ours is unique in that it takes the four content course areas, English, history, science, and math, and it, and it uh, develops them together with the elective teacher, with the computer science teacher, with the engineering teacher, with the digital media arts teacher to create an interdisciplinary STEAM-based, they, they create units, they create co collaborative projects, they integrate these concepts across their curriculum which creates a truly unique opportunity. And if you see that little quote at the bottom, Orange County Department of Education is partnering with us and they've offered us training along the way. And they call our STEAM Village groundbreaking. Nobody in Orange County is doing anything exactly like we're doing. They have some standalone programs where the computer science teacher will work in isolation and the English teacher will work in isolation and do maybe some technology in their, in their course but they don't develop them and integrate them together. And that is what we do that's different than anyone else. And it is all founded and based around project-based learning. Students are required to work together in a project-based learning environment. And that is, that is so critical to uh, the success of our program. And that's also critical to the awareness of students entering into our program and families so that they know that they are going to be working in partnership with other students. They'll be teaming with other students along the way uh, in, in these projects that are, that are being developed. So the expected outcomes of our program, we, we want to develop students who are, are creative, they're innovative, they can critically think, and again, team-oriented. And we want them during their lessons and during the projects 
um, to, to be able to use human center, human centered design thinking to be problem solvers. So we want to try and take real world problems and help them design solutions to those problems. And it's going to prepare them for opportunities in the workforce, in STEAM, and even outside of STEAM, in high school, in college, and in career. And also, if you're not aware, we do have a K-12 STEAM pathway in Saddleback Valley. For those of you who are Santiago parents, if you're at the Santiago STEAM Magnet School, that is the beginning of the of the pathway and it continues on through Serrano and uh, in two years um, the first group will hit El Toro High School. Our current seventh graders will be that first group. Again, thank you for being those guinea pigs, uh, but El Toro has been planning and preparing to roll out this STEAM pathway much like we have, but they've had a couple of extra years to begin working on it as this group is making their way through uh, the process. So that is what we are looking to do with our outcomes in a, in a nutshell. And you know, what I have just taken, oh, about, uh, you know, seven or eight minutes, I think, to sum up, these students are probably going to do a better job uh, than, than me here in just a few minutes. But I want to show you what some of our students say about the STEAM Village. STEAM is science, technology, technology engineering, engineering, art, and math. math. It's an elective where all your uh, subjects are joined together and you can really be creative. <laughs> yeah, we also do a lot of projects. A lot of projects, a lot of working together too. It's a two-year program for a year, so both years that you'll be at Serrano, you'll take STEAM Village. Um, also, you learn like three different things. So you learn computer science, engineering, and multimedia in each trimester. Um, I think I would say that Finding out how to work with the team best is the most challenging. Some of your teammates are really different from you and they're not necessarily always people you know very well. So sometimes it's kind of challenging finding like something the same with them. And also they go at different paces than you sometimes. So you kind of have to align yourself with them. Um, we have to work with a lot of people. So there's some people we don't exactly get along with. So it makes it kind of hard to fit in certain challenges that we need to get done in a trimester. I think the most challenging part about Steve Village is having to work in a group because you don't always get along with everyone, but in the end you have to make it work. Mm. The, teamwork. All the teamwork. The teamwork. I really like the projects that we all end up doing together in the elective. You take all your subjects and mash them into one. Yeah, we get to do giant projects with our friends. Yeah, I, do, to... I do really agree with this one, uh, how all the subjects pile on top of each other to one big thing. It's just amazing. Um, there's a big en emphasis on harmony between all your classes, how everything relates to each other instead of like different like classes are like completely different things. Uh, we did a breakout room, so we had to make a uh, a breakout box that was on a what do we call it? A, tri a trifold. 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 And, and we had to make clues for each subject. So we we, uh, we had a science clue and then a math clue and then a history. And, and then once we have all our clues, we put them all together on one board. And once we are done, you break out. Yeah, you go in the gym. A bunch of eighth graders come and they test our projects. Yeah, so it works. It was kind of fun to see them struggling with all the rocks. <laughs> Um, failing with all the locks and some of them succeeding. But yeah. don't worry, that'll be us next year if you guys join. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, I, you should definitely do it because you're going to have a great time with all the people that you meet here, with all your teachers that you get. It's a great program. Um, it's really challenging, but if you're into like puzzles and like riddles and stuff like that, it's definitely something you would like. There's really something for everyone in, in each of the different parts of STEAM. There's, there's a little bit for everybody. We hope you join. Okay, it's going to get loud, so uh, be Do prepared. Enjoy Enjoy engineering, you really can be creative and be inspired Turn by Turn your volumes too. down. Join STEAM, you'll have a blast! So, 
that is the viewpoint of our students in STEAM. And you know, you'll, one thing I find interesting about that, their favorite part of STEAM Village is working together, uh, working with others, and the biggest challenge they face is working together and working with others. So isn't that just the same way I think that it is sometimes with us as adults? So they do have some of those same challenges, but it is so vital and it is so important to what our students do and what we're preparing them to do as we move into uh, you know, the, the future of their, of their world, of their academic experience, and as they go into uh, the career that they're going to face. So, you know, with that, I, I hope you kind of enjoyed getting an opportunity to see them. Uh, give me just a little thumbs up to say that you could hear that and, and that uh, you persevered through the glitches uh, that, that I had here. Well, excellent. Um, I am also seeing that uh, we have a uh, hundred participants uh, now here. So our Zoom meeting is full. So if you feel at any time that you have had your answers, uh, your questions answered, or you've had information and you drop out, you will make room for maybe somebody who's waiting. I'm not saying you need to leave at all, but I'm just letting you know that if you do, somebody else will step in and take your place. Um, I know we've got uh, some uh, chat questions coming in, but before we start to take some questions, let me uh, do a, a couple of things. And first, uh, let me kind of introduce some important people in the house. Uh, we have our two assistant principals, uh, Mr. Rubio, our eighth grade assistant principal. Hello, everybody, welcome. All right, and we have our seventh grade assistant principal, Mrs. Branley. Hello. <laughs> awesome. And let's see, our, our teachers in the house. I, I think we have most of our, our STEAM teachers here in the house, but our, our current seventh grade teachers, Mrs. Ho. Hi, I'm Math, Mrs. Ho. And uh, Mrs. Danielson. Good morning, I teach science. And Mr. Cook. Morning, I'm the history teacher. And Mr. Flores. Good morning, I am the English teacher. All right, and uh, our current uh, digital media arts teacher, uh, Dr. McElfish. Hello, how you doing? All right, and uh, slated to uh, be on the, on the roster, on the playing field for next year. And, and by the way, you know, staffing is one of those things that, that are unique. Um, I, I always say this every year. I don't know which teachers are going to retire, uh, move to uh, Honduras and, uh, you know, become coffee farmers or do anything. But these are the teachers that are currently, you know, have worked hard to prepare for uh, next year. So uh, we have Mrs. Olavison. Hi, I'll be teaching STEAM Math 8 and STEAM Algebra 1. And we have Mrs. Souter. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Souter. I teach uh, eighth grade science from STEAM Village. And we have Ms. Prey. Hi, I teach eighth grade English with the STEAM department. And we have Mr. Pine. Good morning. I teach uh, eighth grade U.S. history. And we have Mr. Fletcher. Hello, I'll be teaching seventh and eighth grade electives. All right, now you guys probably, as, as parents, whether you're brand new parents or current parents, probably have lots of questions, maybe about projects, about programs, about how it's going to all work. Well, I will let you know, as I mentioned before, about building a plane while we're flying. Well, especially with respect to the eighth grade teachers, they are going to be going through this for the first time next year. They are currently developing their projects. And you know, they spent some time last summer talking about and developing projects. And then funny things happened during the year. We had a science textbook adoption. So there's a brand new science textbook next year for seventh grade and eighth grade, which may change a little bit of the timeline of when concepts get taught. So we are still developing our projects as we speak for both grade levels. Um, so those are things that we may not have specific answers for right now. Um, but 
you know, our, our teachers are here to possibly answer some general questions about things like that, um, but also uh, program uh, questions that, that can be answered by myself or by um, our counselors. And by the way, I did see Mrs. Blake, our count, or Ms. Blake, our counselor in. Are you still here, Ms. Blake? I am. Morning. Thank you. Thank you. Is Mrs. Well, Bean in there? I, I could not see uh, Mrs. Bean uh, in hello. my paper. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry. I, I missed you guys on the front screen here. Um, many of you probably have questions about zero period because I know there are lots of requests for zero period. For the very first time, we opened up the requests for incoming seventh graders to take a zero period so you could have STEAM and a zero period. We're currently looking at those, and I will be completely transparent and open with you with regards to seventh grade, because right now I'm looking at 21 students who requested a zero period. They requested STEAM as their first choice. They requested a zero period, and they requested a year-long elective. Those were kind of the rules. Well, 21 isn't a big enough number for us to have a, a zero period class. So we're looking at options for either pulling in some other students that may want a zero period that are non-STEAM students or allowing students to take a different second elective besides STEAM. So I don't have any clear cut uh, affirmed answers of who has a zero period and who does not or even what those zero period classes will be. But I do want to let you know we are working on that, and I am trying to make provision, especially for those students who want to music, want to be in part of the music program, seventh or eighth grade, and they want to be in STEAM as well. I really want to make that happen for you so that you don't have to make that choice to say, oh, gosh, I really want STEAM, but I really want to play the trumpet. So we're trying to make that work for everybody. Um, with that... Let's kind of uh, open up the floor for questions. Uh, normally with honors classes, uh, kids are able to select whether they want to take only English honors or only history and whatnot. How does that work with STEAM? Okay, yeah, great question. Thank you, Mr. Rubio, and thank you for the person who submitted that question. Uh, you know, at, at this time, you know, we, we want, we're trying to develop STEAM as a totally inclusive program, meaning uh, you know all levels and areas uh, of student abilities of students can come in. You know, we haven't quite been able to you know open that up, especially to our disabled students, but we're we're working on that. Um, but in terms of honors, we definitely have the ability uh, to create honors sections within our STEAM program. So if you have qualified for honors in any of our other honors subjects, we will have STEAM honors classes there. The incoming seventh grade students will be getting a letter home uh, soon, and maybe one of our counselors can talk about that if you are aware of it. I know our, our, our guidance technicians are working on a letter to send to you for qualifications for entrance into our honors program. And obviously you'll have to respond, yes, I do wanna be in the honors program because I've qualified uh, to that. So there will be a place. Um, I don't know if that answers the general question, but. Uh, my name's Renee Den. Um, the question was in terms of um, like my son, he's looking at doing maths honors. He could do English honors if he really put, pushed himself to, but isn't really inclined to do it. So I'm wondering, can I, he only do math honors and then just do regular English as part of the STEAM village? Or does he have to take all honors classes? in STEAM or all non-honors classes in STEAM? Uh, thank, thank you for the clarification, Mrs. Din. I appreciate that. It's absolutely. Uh, it, it, you are not obligated to take all honors. You can take uh, one or the other. Uh, if, if it's a math or English, yeah, you, you can uh, not take English and you can take math or vice versa. Um, Mrs. Olavison, do you want to comment on math at all? Yes, there's both sections. So um, for math, your child, we just finished doing those recs about a week and a half ago, and you will be receiving information whether you are in honors or not. There are both sections in seventh grade and eighth grade. And you can choose just to be in math honors or just to be in English. You have the same choice that any other child at the school would have for honors. Okay, other questions? How is seventh different from eighth grade STEAM? Okay. I, I think other than the obvious things I, I, I mentioned in terms of, you know, eighth is a, 
a brand new program. Essentially, the four core subjects are working in collaboration with the elective teacher to integrate projects in. Each grade level will have one major project each trimester. Those projects will be independent, unique, and different for each uh, elective subject and each grade level. Uh, so essentially, and each grade level will also follow the, the common core state standards for their individual subject as well just as any non-STEAM course would. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, seventh grader um, last year didn't get into STEAM because he transferred in kind of just at the last minute, so he didn't make it into STEAM. Uh, but this year he did get into STEAM, so wondering if he's going to be able to catch up with the rest of the guys uh, and girls. And um, the seventh grader that's coming in, I'm not certain if he got into STEAM or not, as we only got one male um, saying, you know, your kid's in STEAM, come join the meeting. But I'm not sure if both got in or just one. Okay, um, first and foremost, with, with regards to your incoming seventh grade students, um, please email our guidance department and they can give you specific information. They are tracking each individual request, uh, elective choice form, and uh, you know trying to get students into their number one choice. If both of your students selected it as number one choice and there weren't any mistakes on that, they should have been granted in. There was enough space to put all of our number one STEAM, uh, incoming seventh grade STEAM uh, students into the program. With regards to the eighth grade program, hey, any of the eighth graders, you want eighth grade teachers, you wanna, you wanna tackle that one? Is, it, uh, is anyone going to be behind? Or seventh grade teachers, you could talk about that as well. I just wanted on that. Oh, sorry. Go oh, about the science teachers. Uh, <laughs> would you like to go ahead, Mrs. Suter? Oh, just going to say that um, I, from my perspective in science, as long as the student is, has a can-do attitude and is willing to accept those challenges those students talked about previously, um, the, obviously the, the content is different. So um, we do spiral, we do reteach, we do formatively assess and make sure everybody's caught up. Um, but I think the, the attitude of willing to um, you know, do that work needed to just catch up with the team building skills, I think is the only, the only thing that would be a hurdle is if they, um, they weren't willing, but anybody that's willing, I think is gonna be successful. And to add to that, you heard the students talk in the video about how much teamwork they do. And something that I've seen is they really pull each other up and they really have that attitude of collaborating and working together and, and finishing the task. And so I don't see any problems with the student being behind as far as not being in those classes in seventh grade. I think they'll be welcomed in um, to the projects and to the classes. Yeah, th thank you, Mrs. Danielson and uh, Mrs. Suter. And just to let you know, and, and this will, you know, also come as news to, you know, some of our, our, our teachers, um, I, they, I, th I think they're aware that I did give the opportunity for eighth grade students next year to request a STEAM elective because while the, the program classes were full last year, we also want to be able to you know, be aware that there will be some attrition due to students moving out of the area and, uh, and, and there being spaces created. So we did open that opportunity to create a waiting list for students that may be able to fill existing spots. So we, do, we are aware that there you know, will be a level of newness for them, but as the teacher shared, I think if they come in with the right attitude and right mindset, they're, they're gonna do well. Mr. Young, uh, the next one is, I'm gonna just throw two in one. Um, how do I know if my child has zero period? And I thought Steam, was, Steam Village was a zero period. Uh, th yeah, thank, thank you for both of those questions. So uh, Steam Village isn't necessarily going to be the zero period. A zero, and it most likely won't be a zero period. More often than not, what we do is we offer PE as a zero period because it's an opportunity for us, number one, to have more students get a zero period because we can put more people in, or more students into a, a PE class. Uh, so, so typically it's PE, uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely not necessarily STEAM and most likely won't be a STEAM class. Um, and in terms of the availability or students being put into a zero period, that is still 
part of the scheduling process that we're working on yet. So no zero periods have currently been assigned. That's what we're working on and we will notify you. You know, normally we don't notify folks of their schedule until, you know, when we get close to returning in August. However, this year, for those of you incoming seventh grade parents who got the notification about this meeting, you know that you have been placed in the STEAM Village. So you got an advance on your schedule. So don't tell anybody else because they didn't get theirs. Um, just really quick, I want to make an observation that Mrs. Bean uh, posted uh, her information as well as Ms. Uh, uh, or the contact information for guidance. She put the emails on there. So if, if parents, you guys want to go and check out the chat, the guidance information is on there. Uh, next question, Mr. Young, and it's quite a few are, that are similar. Uh, if my kiddo is in STEAM right now and wants to continue uh, through high school with the STEAM, can they go to any high school or is the pathway only through El Toro? Uh, yes, a uh, great question. At, at this time, uh, the pathway is through El Toro High School. And uh, the, the idea as well is to be able to hopefully at some point in time have a designation on high school diplomas signifying that students have completed the STEAM pathway. So certainly if you want to try that, that's definitely the route. And I think for anybody who is in Serrano, or coming through Serrano that may not be slated to go to El Toro for whatever reason, there's the opportunity to choice in due to this program. Mr. Gian, do you mind if I uh, fill into that? Absolutely. I know you have some uh, personal awareness of the program there. Yes, uh, my daughter actually goes to El Toro and is in the engineering program, which is obviously very beneficial to me. Uh, we, we're also, you know, one of the differences between what we're working with at El Toro, and let's say if you go to other schools, there are other schools that offer career technical education type classes, but we're working with El Toro and finding out, okay, what are some of the knowledge, what are some of the skills do our kids need in order to be successful into their program? So, uh, yes, you could, you know, there are other schools in our district that offer similar uh, career technical education programs, but again, we're working directly with El Toro in order to uh, make sure that our kids are prepared for their program. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Um, a great insight. Uh, let's see, in terms of questions, I, I want to kind of see if we can start to delineate some of our questions because our, our teachers have a limited amount of time and I definitely want to, you know, value their time because they have classes that they need to get back out to and uh, office hours and things like that. So let's focus on questions that may be related to a specific subject matter or less logistical, because I will stay on as long as necessary to answer all of those questions, but I want to make sure we can get uh, our, our teachers in, involved and, and back out to their classrooms here shortly. I, I know I received by email um, kind of a specific question related to uh, trimester three being distance learning and our, our STEAM Village, uh, you know, kind of moving into a distance learning project. Um, you know, I don't know if any of the seventh grade teachers want to talk about that transition, what it was going to be and what it is now, um, and kind of what students are working on, you know, that, that would be insightful for probably not only our current parents, but also our, our incoming parents to know possibly what that uh, project was, was to be. I mean, and, and, you know, thank you all for your patience as we have transitioned over to distance learning. You know, we, we basically turned the school upside down in basically one week that we were off and came back uh, to a totally new world. And uh, we are certainly learning as we go. And uh, there are certain limitations to this. Uh, and we're feeling that limitation right here, right now, based on this meeting. Uh, but certainly thank you for your patience and your perseverance with us through that. So any seventh grade teacher want to talk about the Tri-3 project? So we started planning the Tri-3 project back in the summer, and obviously everything since the summer has changed. Originally, the project was going to be students um, focusing on ecology and um, doing a project through the digital media arts class. 
and students were going to work in groups to grow a garden on um, an empty site on our campus. So now with distance learning, we've really had to um, modify that project. And right now we have a group of students who have continued to want to work in a group setting. So they're setting up Zoom meetings and they're working as a group. And we have quite a few students who also wanted to work on the project individually. We gave them the option of either growing food scraps um, at home on their own and monitoring those scraps to see the growth patterns over time or looking at some data that uh, the teachers are collecting and sharing with those students. So Mr. Young mentioned before that we're really looking at the human-centered design process and solving problems. So our problem for that trimester three project is that produce isn't as available. People can't go to grocery stores as frequently. So here is our option. We're teaching the community how to grow food scraps at home. So along with that science portion of collecting data, um, the students have also set up a Facebook page and have, pushing, have been pushing out their information on social media to really get the community involved in knowing how to do this project at home. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Danielson. Mr. Young, uh, um, Tarini is yes. um, here with me and she just wanted to say something about Mrs. Um, Danielson's project. Will that be okay real quick? Absolutely. So um, we really like the project so far. It's growing over there. It's been really nice to check on it every day. And it's nice because we can't always go outside and buy things now. And we're, we're working in a group for like our slideshow and all. And it's been really nice because we can also connect with everyone again. And yeah, it's been really fun to see how it's going. I wasn't sure it would work. Definitely, I know you've been doing some some great work, uh, but you you should just say, yeah, that's what I grew, and it's because of my great skills, you know, that I grew that giant tree, <laughs> magic beans. Oh, uh, thank thank you, Tarini, for sharing. Uh, and uh, did uh, that answer your question as well, or some thoughts you had about the the project? How many periods of steam are there in a day? Will all steam students have same teachers for all periods? Tarini, you want to give that one a shot? How many STEAM classes do you have each day? Well, we have five <clears throat> classes, but then we have PE, so the total is six classes, but there's five that are like with the STEAM curriculum. Excellent. And do you have the same teachers in those five classes that every other seventh grade STEAM student has? Yes. All right, so I think Tarini answered that question. Yes and yes, uh, five classes and all the teachers are the same. How many STEAM students were in it this year? And how many, what are the class sizes in STEAM, uh, you know, village? All right, uh, current seventh grade teachers, class sizes this year. Um, I'm Mr. Flores. Uh, it ranges between about like 28 to about like 36, but that's English classes. Um, the biggest one I had was 36. The smallest one I had was 28. Mine were on average about 30 in math. I had the same range of Mr. Flores, about 28 to 36. Yeah, it wasn't as easy to get the classes in the humanities and you know history and English balanced as it was in uh, science and math. Uh, how, however, the average is, is right there where, where they talked about. Um, and I, ideally, we'd, we'd like the average to be right around 34 per class uh, with a completely full roster. That, that is where we would kind of keep it capped um, is, is the ideal. Do students uh, go to different classrooms or just stay in one classroom for STEAM all day long? So students in seventh grade STEAM Village rotate just like uh, students who are not in the STEAM Village. They go from um, classroom to classroom based on an individual schedule, based on what classes they're in, whether they're in um, honors or, or um, grade level classes. Um, and no, uh, and students just rotate through all, seven, all six classes. 
In particular, during trimester one, when students were working on their mini escape rooms, it was really nice to have the flexibility of the village because um, students were grouped through their elective classes and we were able to take those students and my typical makeup of a science class was different on that day. It was based on um, the elective teacher's elective class. And so we're able to rotate through the students, move them to different classes and kind of change their schedules if it's needed because of the project that we're working on. So that's really nice. Something else that's nice about our classrooms is um, all of the STEAM teachers have innovate classrooms, which means that we have large screens, we have flexible seating, and that also really helps us with our project time. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Danielson. Okay, as, as we're kind of nearing the end of our time, I do wanna say if there aren't any questions specifically for curriculum or classroom. Some, uh, we had a question on how the students will be placed in honors classes since we were not able to uh, you know, finish off the year. Okay, so I mostly address the incoming seventh graders. Um, your seventh grader, your teacher, your sixth grade teacher just did their recommendations about two weeks ago. So what we did is we took two years of CAS scores. We have two years of the last um, fifth and fourth, just like we did last year. We also looked at their grades. We looked at teacher recommendations and they were able to take an IAB test, which is a state um, simulation before they left. So the incoming, if you're an incoming seventh grader, you were placed either in honors or non-honors. It's the same process whether you're in STEAM or not. Now that being said, at the beginning of next year, the seventh grade teachers are going to screen every student in math and we can make changes at that time. So that's how the seventh grade program is gonna work. The eighth grade program um, is set up just the same as last year and we just submitted our recommendations two days ago for honors or non-honors. And some of you who were not in honors will have the opportunity to take the bridge course if your um, student was doing well, but was not in a math seven. So if you have any more questions, I'll be happy if you wanna shoot me an email, but it's very similar to the process we have done all, um, every year. So I hope that answered that. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Lavison. Uh, Mrs. Bean or Ms. Blake, do you want to share anything about the notification process for honors, whether it's you know with with math or with respect to English? Um, we usually don't send out notifications until about midsummer. Um, of course, schools are going to be starting a little bit earlier this year, so letters will go out a couple weeks earlier this year. But um, it takes a while to get everyone. Uh, scheduled in the master schedule. So once that's all solidified, then the letters will go out. I'm thinking probably uh, mid to beginning July. Other questions? Young, for yeah, what, just a clarification earlier, uh, one of the parents wanted to specifically know how many kids were in the program. Uh, I put together the classroom size in that same question, but they wanted to specifically know uh, how many students were in the program, the village program. Right. Uh, with with respect to incoming seventh graders, we're we're going to cap it at 170, which is 34 per classroom. Uh, and uh, with with eighth grade, we're looking to do the same, which is just a little over 130. And last year we had how many seventh graders? Seventh graders, we were I think one. 22. I think we ended up 121 uh, due to I think somebody moving. Yes, so we, we were not quite, as, as you heard the teachers mention their class sizes, um, you know, we, we want to put 34 in a class at the maximum, but as the first year in the program, we filled it with all those who wanted to be in the classroom. So we filled four classes to near capacity, but we had a little bit of room. And that's why I opened the door as well for uh, eighth graders for next year who hadn't been in STEAM to give them an opportunity if they wanted to fill some of those available spaces all the way up into, you know, 100 and, uh, you know, to 34 per class. I hope that helped. 
how much time do our students have for passing period? And um, how will I know when my student got zero, if they were able to uh, get that zero period? They have five minutes during passing period. I don't know, it's been a while since passing period, but five minutes, correct? <laughs> um, and Mr. Rubio and I test it every year from Miss Maldonado's furthest portable to Miss Mangione's English class and see if we can get water and get there. Um, and we are successful every single year. So they've got, they've got five minutes to get around our campus. And from furthest to furthest, they do have to hustle a bit, but it, you know, it, is, it is plenty of time for them. Um, in regards to zero period, typically uh, the families are made aware of their zero period based on receiving their schedule at Hawk Walk. Um, I know there's been some talk about maybe letting them know a little bit earlier than that this year. I know there's a lot of carpooling and things that you need to figure out. Um, but what I would suggest to do is just make a plan A and a plan B if you've applied for zero period. Um, so that you can have a backup plan, whether you do receive zero period or not. Does that sound right, Mr. Young? That, that is absolutely correct. And let, let me see, with, with those of you who are still here on video, can, can you just give me a show of hands? Have you asked for a zero period? Did you request a zero period? Um, just doing a quick little scan, requesting a zero period. Anybody ask for a zero period? Uh, it looks like, you know, definitely less than half of us have requested a zero period. Um, I, I do want to reiterate with zero period. Zero period is a commitment that once we place you into zero period, we ask that you make that commitment for the whole year. Um, so that's why we really want people to think, you know, very strongly about, hey, am I willing to get up and get to school by 715 every morning, even when it's cold and dark in the middle of winter? Um, because what happens is if, if we fill a class and students then opt out, then, then we've staffed a class utilizing resources and budget and, and space that is no longer full. And that is just a poor use of resources on, on our part. So we want to make sure. And anytime we offer a zero period, what that does by giving a student a second elective, that also causes our staffing to change as well, because we are now, instead of giving students their six periods, we're giving them an additional seventh period, which obviously there's a cost in that. So we make that available, but we do expect it to be a firm commitment. So when you get that information, uh, you know, that notification, please make sure that you are a firm yes, we are committed and we're gonna do that. Um, and, and if any of you are rethinking that now, based on what I just shared, you know, contact one of our counselors or our counseling office or our guidance office and let them know uh, through, through an email to say, hey, you know what, we're rethinking this zero period. Um, but we, we certainly want to offer it as a tool and a resource to be able to enhance students' academic experience. I mean, giving them an opportunity to take two electives is phenomenal, and I want to try and do that. So, yeah, we, that's where we want to be. Uh, can I still request a zero period for my students? Uh, the question also, what times does zero period and first period start? I'll go ahead and answer that one right now. Zero period starts at 7.15, as Mr. Young stated earlier. So during the winter uh, months, it tends to be a little darker and damper and colder. Uh, regular start time to the school is 8.15. Kiddos need to be in their classrooms at 8.15 and 7.15 for zero period. Uh, I thought uh, that zero period was only for STEAM students. And the next question is also, uh, have we considered instead of zero period, maybe doing an eighth period, a seventh period later on in the day? Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I threw a lot of questions on there, but uh, they were all basically similar. Yeah, no problem. Uh, traditionally, eighth grade students have been given the opportunity for a zero period um, well before STEAM Village ever started. So that has been open to all students to ask for a zero period for those students who want to take a second elective, second year long, year long elective. Um, with regards to incoming seventh graders, uh, you are correct in your assumption. It was only for STEAM Village students. And what I, what I mean by that is initially it was opened up 
for the purpose of STEAM Village students being able to take the STEAM Village and take one of those year-long electives that they had to make that choice between. However, I did give the choice out to all students because as I think I shared at the beginning, I'm not, I wasn't sure how many students in the STEAM Village were going to request it. If I can fill one section of zero period with all STEAM Village students, that's where we would cap it and that zero period would be closed and it would be just exclusively for those STEAM Village students. However, if I'm where I'm at now with only 21 STEAM Village students requesting a zero period, and the choice is either I don't offer a zero period for those 21 students and they have to make that choice, either STEAM Village or the other elective they want, or opening it up to another group of students, that, that's where I'm at in considering that. And that, that's why I open up the opportunity. And, and you know, my, my thinking is I will open it up to those outside of the STEAM Village so that I can enable the STEAM Village students to be able to take STEAM Village and another elective. I hope that answered the question. And the, the, the other part, I, I know I asked too many questions at once. Um, have we considered a later period as opposed to zero? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, it, it's, it hasn't been uh, proposed at, at this stage in my two years here at Serrano. So I'm not saying it's out of the uh, range of thinking, but I think in terms of just being able logistics and convenience to be able to do it before school rather than after school. It's just so much uh, simpler on the early end. Uh, do STEAM students do more work than the other students? Ah, that is a great question. And uh, that was, that would have been one great for the teachers. Uh, I know Mr. Fletcher can kind of address that. I mean, he's entering into the program next year, but I, I think he has some insights. And if you want to take a shot, Mr. Fletcher, if not, I will. Yeah. Uh, you know, a few things is, uh, you know, program for each of the electives. So you have, uh, you know, the computer science, the engineering, and the digital media arts. Uh, where I visualize uh, my STEAM kids, you know, I will have a couple sections of what are called the wheel electives. And these are students in either seventh or eighth grade that are not in a year long. And what I visualize for the STEAM kids is, especially those coming from Santiago, they already have some knowledge that a lot of kids don't, everything from the engineering design process, they have a lot more experience in working in groups in projects like this. So when, I, I wouldn't clarify any, I wouldn't classify what kids would do in my class as being more work. Uh, they may do work that's a little farther advanced than the other kids. So it's not more work, it's deeper work. Uh, you know, and again, in the case of the STEAM Village, I, I don't have to spend as much time on the basics like the engineer, how to work as a group, how to work as an engineering design process. Plus, they're using up some of that time in my class to actually put together their trimester project. So that is a that is a big difference between, let's say, my non-STEAM kids and my STEAM kids. Uh, my non-STEAM kids, I do have to spend time more on the basics. Uh, they're still going to get a lot of the same information, but they may not go as deep into it as what I would expect from my STEAM kids who also, if they're going into STEAM, they have a passion to do this kind of work. So normally when a kid has a passion, they really want to get into it. I think my biggest fear is keeping up with them. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fletcher. And, and Can I certainly... also chime in on that, Mr. Young? Mm -hmm. Yes. From a, from a core perspective, um, as far as just the, the homework and classwork level for um, core classes, um, I think in science, it's quite comparable um, as far as um, talking about homework and um, we still are following the standards-based curriculum that our non steam village uh, colleagues are following. The benefit is that um, we're in constant communication with those other core subjects. So you're not gonna run into the, oh my gosh, I have a ton of math tonight and I have a ton of science tonight and I have a ton of history tonight and I have a ton of English tonight because the teachers aren't on the same page. Um, we communicate much more closely together in the STEAM Village, so we're more aware of those stressors in other core classes. And so you'll, um, the, the goal is that you'll find more of a balance when it comes to the work like that. And um, I totally agree with Mr. Fletcher, too, in the, in the science 
Um, it's a it's a deeper level thought process. It's a more interdisciplinary thought process. It's not um, you know more. It's not more or less you know problems on a workbook page. It's um, to me, it, my my vision for the science in eighth grade is going to be that it's more of um, uh, pragmatic work towards your common goal um, and not, you know, just individual science, 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 science homework. So um, that's just another perspective from um, eighth grade core concept. Uh, if 21 students is enough, what number are you looking at to fill up a class and to ensure that we do offer that zero period? Yeah, uh, great question. I, I mean, for me, in terms of economizing, for me, 45 would, would be the ideal amount. And then I can open up a section of PE because PE gives me far greater um, efficiency uh, with regards to one section because a PE class can, be, can actually be you know, 50 or even more. You know, 45 would be a great number. Whereas a classroom-based class would be 34. So I can give more kids an opportunity to experience that zero period elective by opening a section of PE. So, you know, 45 would be a great number to be able to say uh, that that's where we would start. That, that's my goal. Hey, Jonah, how you doing down there? Jonah, a student, you have a question? Just hanging out with us? Looking forward to Steam Village? Awesome, we're looking forward to having you. Let's see, Prentice, how you doing there, Prentice? You can wave. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there are no more questions, I want to thank you so much for the time that you gave to us here. Um, Mr. Rubio is waving. I don't know if he's waving goodbye yeah, no, or if he's sorry. got a question. No, no, no. Sorry. The one just came in. A question just came in. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So zero period would not be a STEAM class, right? Uh, I, I wouldn't say absolutely not. Um, I, ideally, I would rather not have it be a STEAM Village class, How, however it, it can. And, and here's my, my fundamental reason why I wouldn't want it to be a STEAM Village class. And, you know, this, this may be, you know, technical for some, but especially in seventh grade, if I take either grade really, but if I take a STEAM Village class and put it in zero period by itself, there's there will be other times during the day that that group will not be able to join together in another group of steam village students that are meeting together so i i hope that kind of makes sense but that group would stand alone and set apart because they would have a separate class when the rest of their steam village teammates partners are in their class well, we, we do give normally, and last year I changed this to give out schedules a, a little earlier. Previously, schedules went out on the first day of school. Um, and uh, that, that is like really waiting. That, that's like Christmas never happens, you know? It's like, is it ever gonna get here? Um, but last year we did it during Hawk Walk. So that, that is when we are shooting to make sure all schedules are developed, ready, and available for print or distribution. And Hawk Walk will be, uh, this year, it will be the first week of August. Um, so I, I can't commit to any time sooner than that. However, as Mrs. Bean mentioned earlier, zero period, um, I will try and notify you as soon as possible. If we have slated you for a zero period so you can start to make arrangements for that. Um, so with zero period, I'll go out on a limb here and say, I would like to notify you by the end of June, which would give you all of July and the first part of August to kind of think about that. Uh, we will be working on the master schedule and developing it. And I would love to say it's going to be complete by the end of June. All right, and uh, with, with that, uh, my, my last uh, shout outs for those of you that I can see on the front page at least. Uh, Elijah, thanks for joining us. Kevin, uh, thanks for joining us. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Um, so appreciate this. I, I really miss seeing people face to face and uh, you know, seeing the joy of learning taking place in the classroom. But uh, for now, Zoom is it and we're making the best of it. 
thank you all staff that are still here for joining us. Thank you parents and students for joining us. If you have further questions, uh, I do wanna direct you to our guidance office, either one of our counselors, uh, Mrs. Bean or Ms. Blake. Uh, you can go onto our website and see that, or we have two um, student services technicians who work with the schedule. That is Mrs. Trahey and uh, Mrs. Dickelman, and their names will also be on our website. So I won't even try and spell those for you, uh, but you can connect to our guidance office there. And if, if you do send me a question, I am telling you my, my email inbox is like, uh, you know, 100 to 150 a day, and I churn through them. I will, if you send me an email, I, I will definitely take it, get it, and I may send it over to the guidance department to be able to answer that for you. Um, but we will do our best to answer all of your questions. And I hope this forum here and this format was helpful for you and did help to answer some of those questions and hopefully put a little personalization on the STEAM program. So congratulations for those of you who are brand new to the STEAM program, welcome. And uh, thanks for all those returning and we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. Everybody have a great day, a great Friday. Bye.